Um, I will give you a short introduction into Pangea, what is Pangea actually about? And um, you can go to the next slide, Malik. Um, so um, Pangea, well, I'm, I'm sure you, you, you might have stumbled across the website and, uh, you know, maybe a little bit about uh, about Pangea in the case that it is actually a data publisher. So um, this is the central point. Um, Pangea um, archives, curates and publishes data. And um, the focus lies on earth and environmental science, um, or system science data, but it has a wide variety. If you go to the um, Pangea um, webpage, you can already see these, um, these <laughs> square tiles here, and it's, um, you'll find data on um, biological classification as well as uh, on chemistry, paleontolo paleontology, okay, and uh, all different topics there. Um, Pangea is hosted by the Alfred Wegener Institute in Bremerhaven and the Marum Center for Marine and Environmental Sciences from the University of Bremen. Um, and you might see that um, originally, um, because of this uh, two hosting institution, um, Pangea has a strong uh, marine focus, but um, it, uh, it spread out and um, you also find a lot of terrestrial data or um, let's say aerial data here. So there's a wide variety of data. Um, Pangea is a uh, trusted repository and it is core trust here certified. Uh, why this could matter to you is um, that it guarantees you, um, for example, a minimum um, archival period of the data. So if you store data in Pangea, it will be safe for at least 10 years, rather longer, but um, the 10 years is a guaranteed period. Um, you can access data in Pangea via various ways, for example, of course, via the website. So um, you have the data search um, index there. Um, you can also, if you have an account, you can also use the data warehouse um, where it is possible to combine um, different data sets um, that are, for example, looking at the same um, measurement. You can combine these data sets together and do analysis on that. Um, there are also other tools, for example, um, there is a Python package for those of you who are doing um, scripting or coding work with Python, um, Pangea Pi, which is used to access um, Pangea data programmatically. Okay, so if we look um, at the number of data points and data sets, um, you can see that um, well, over the years, uh, <laughs> Pangea accumulated quite a lot, uh, a lot of data points. Here you can um, see the developments um, over roughly 20 years. So it stops here at 2017. In the last six years, um, a lot of more data points came, um, came about. So right now we have um, more than 26 billion data points. So 26 billion measurement points. Um, in our database, um, there are more than 420,000 data sets, um, more than 800 projects. Project means if you have, um, for example, an expedition or similar, which um, generates um, many different data sets, can collect them in, in projects. We have, uh, well, around about 10,000 new data sets per year, which is quite a lot. <laughs> Um, and uh, which consists mostly um, of specific um, data types. So if we go to the next slide, uh, we want to give you a very, very short overview about what we do and what we do not <laughs> do not take. So um, Pangea is really focused on georeference data, which means um, that data sets um, and, and data points um, should always come with uh, where is it collected, so a latitude, longitude, and also a when, um, so a date time. Um, so date time, when and where um, is uh, is very crucial information um, for, for the data sets in Pangea. Um, so georeference data is really uh, the main focus. Um, the kind or the type, how, how the data is best transferred to Pangea is, um, for example, in tabular data. Um, tabular data is uh, an example shown here, um, the depth, age, and um, species, for example, columns. And you will notice that it kind of looks similar to Excel tables, um, which is something that we, for example, accept. Even better, it's uh, tab uh, delimited files or similar. Uh, we also accept binary files, um, for example, pictures are similar um, to be stored in the database. Um, and then we come to the what we do not 
two <laughs> uh, parts, um, for example, model data, um, climate models are similar. Uh, we generally do not store in Pangea, um, as well as software code or um, also sequence data. So molecular uh, nucleotide sequence data, we do not store in Pangea. Um, all of these um, have repositories that are better suited for it. So for example, if you have software code, you can put it to Git, uh, to GitHub or um, store it in Synodo and there's sequence data. Um, of course, you go to the big um, nucleotide sequence um, archives, for example, ENA, the European Nucleotide Archive. And if you store data there and in Pangea, we can, um, if you have related data, we can always interlink it. But I think um, I will not go into detail here. So um, last, I will just show you uh, on the uh, on my last slide um, who is the team behind Pangea. So there is a core team um, who is working at uh, the Marum and the Avi. Um, we have this core team staff, and then uh, there are also associated partners, for example, institutes um, that um, that have um, well a lot of working groups that um, have data that is suitable for Pangea at these associated partners, for example, the UFZ or Max Planck Institute for Chemistry. Uh, we also have data editors that support the researchers at these um, institutions, as well as uh, we do have data editors and curators um, focusing on associated research projects, as you heard in the introduction, for example, the DIM um, or I Atlantic and Summer. And with that, I will hand over to Malik. Yeah. Um, talking of which, um, European projects as I Atlantic and Summer are big projects that we that we are, are basically a, a part of in in Pangea and and work really dedicated to these projects. But uh, another very yeah interesting or yeah um, special point actually in this project is that we are also um, so directly into this project that we are also um, yeah funded by the project basically to do the work and this is something that is so important and I wanted to give you an, uh, an yeah a, um, a look into what data management funding at the moment is um, uh, yeah developing into and it's so important that um, we we are able to support our work and um, the publication um, publication of data is more and more um, really required by uh, not only the the funding agencies, but uh, also you may <clears throat> you may have run into publishing a paper, and uh, the, the 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 publisher is basically asking you to to provide the the data before your journal uh, but before your um, uh, paper can be accepted or reviewed. So this is something that um, is becoming more and more common, and uh, there's different um, levels uh, on the national level, but also on the EU level in in, in larger projects where you can apply directly um, with your project for funding for your data management. And that is something that I wanted to bring up really uh, up front uh, in my talk. So you can um, you can really go about and, and put a, a work package into your project that is dedicated to, to data management. And uh, in that way, really um, form a really close relationship to, to us or to the data manager that you are working together with. And um, that, that is something that is priceless today. And um, as the funding agencies are also actually asking uh, for your data to be um, ac um, accessible or fair uh, published, um, this is something that you should really uh, take into consideration seriously. Talking of which, fair. Um, fair is a concept of data publication and um, yeah, making data re reusable in the end. Uh, FAIR stands for making data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And um, this is something that we will go in these two days of the workshop a little bit more in detail um, about uh, each of these uh, different aspects of FAIR. Um, I just wanted to give you um, a, a short introduction here because, um, yeah, according to the FAIR principles, um, data have to be also be machine readable. So um, this is a very big um, yeah, aspect that we are addressing with Pangea 
with our uh, relational database system um, that in the end, uh, yeah, not only humans uh, are able to to um, to take the data and, and and reuse them, but also machines, which is something that will be priceless for the future. Yeah, why publish data fair? This is a big question because publishing data fair is of course more um it takes more effort to do it yeah so um yes it's it's a big difference about really publishing data in Pangea putting them into into a relational database instead of putting a, a data file on a file server and um not curating the data in any way so um it's, let's start at the very top level so there's a, there's benefits for to society of course yeah so um, it's uh, in the end important that the data is accessible so that decision makers uh, and government policy can um, access the data and use it um, as a as a yeah, foundation of their decisions. Um, but it's also important to build um, trust in science by having the data or the results of, of uh, publicly funded research um, accessible. So, um, this is something that is really important. Um, and uh, yeah, on the next level, uh, the research community level, um, just picking out the, some of the most striking uh, ones here. So um, yeah, we have a, yeah, a significant facilitation um, to, to reuse and to reinterpret the data if the data is, is fair or accessible, reusable. Um, and uh, yeah, also the the replication of of experiments, um, which is yeah often necessary in different um, uh, situations um, to to replicate uh, the, the the experiments in the same sort of um, fashion. It's also um, yeah very much facilitated through this. Um, also yeah, um, the robustness and diversity um, of of your research results. Uh, really much improved and um, when we now um, go from the research community to yeah really the individual level to the to, to each author um, because this is where it all starts when you you want to publish or you should publish your data um, what is the direct benefit to you um, it really shows you that uh, oh, there are studies now um, more and more studies coming up actually that show that uh, yeah, published research articles. Um, yeah, they that leads lead in the end to more citations of your articles if you publish your data. Yeah? So it's a, we we start to really integrate our uh, data citations from Pangea and also other <clears throat> data repositories into the reference sections of the of the journals, and um, the, that way um, your data is gaining more and more visibility and uh, is reused and in that way then also cited so it really adds to your researcher profile um to your metrics in a way yeah also it's important as a um as a referencing cross referencing so it's a, it's a boosting basically your your impact profiles yeah so there are different uh, um, uh, services like uh, Scolix and, and Data Citation Index that are really picking up on this and and um, yeah integrating more and more integrating data citations also into their um, metric system. Um, yeah, of course it adds that adds then also to to your recognition, your reputation, can lead to new collaborations and people find your data, um, and yeah uh, and improves the trend transparency of course also and uh, makes your work much more comprehensible to to your uh, colleagues and um, in your community of course you also get more credit of the work that you did uh, so it's uh, yeah of course you can write 10 papers on your data but just imagine there are uh, 100 more papers on your data because someone else picked up um, your results and, and found them interesting and um, yeah, um, in a way, this is also um, the main message here. So if you um, think of your data being a source of information, there's always, there's a, a citation here, there's always the coolest thing 
with your data that can be done with your data will be thought of by someone else. And um, that can only be achieved if your data is published, is accessible and findable and reusable. So um, it's uh, that's a really um, a striking, striking aspect of data publication. Yeah, um, why publish data with Pangea? Um, we have, uh, there's a recent study that shows that we have a really high, actually the highest uh, fitness or fairness score of uh, all research, research data repositories in Europe. Um, yeah, but what does that mean? So we are running a structured uh, database and um, yeah, have really high, high, like kind of gold standard level of uh, data comparability in that data set, in that uh, database and also interoperability with other services. Um, also one important aspect, of course, we are cost-free um, for individual scientists, um, but it's also a little bit dependent on how many uh, how many uh, submissions you you send to us and also um, yeah, how large the, the data volume uh, in the end is. Um, yeah, what we're offering is really um, yeah, as I said, a kind of a gold standard, expert-supported um, and quality-controlled publication of your data and your metadata. And uh, through this metadata publication and and um, linking, we are really able to yeah um, distribute your data and and make it findable over yeah various data portals and and search tools. And that's quite nicely depicted here. Um, you see basically punchy in the middle and and yeah just a selection of of the services that we are um, connected to that can be used to to search data and find data in Pangea and um, then yeah access it and basically reuse it for your needs uh, two I want to pick out here is uh, of course Google and and open air Google, be, Google, because it's just uh, so intuitive to to everyone, and Open Air, which is a special service that yeah is a collection of metadata um, uh, information, uh, yeah, basically very comprehensive, including all kinds of metadata, and uh, making therefore not only data publications but also papers and projects and everything that kind of feeds into the metadata record um, accessible and. Um, findable. So I just wanted to give you a, an example by looking, searching basically for a publication that is uh, in Pangea and how how easily it can be found. So this is actually a a, a publication from the project that I am also uh, working for. That is um, I Atlantic, and um, this publication in uh, in Pangea. Uh, was published a while ago. And if we <clears throat> uh, basically look for, this is kind of the landing page that you have for a data set in uh, Pangea. And if you look for search terms like the title, um, here it would be uh, stable isotopes, uh, stable oxygen isotope, sediment core. And uh, if you look also for the project acronym, um, and then you go to a search portal like um, Pangea, and uh, you will really find it in the first hit. Yeah? So you put these search terms in the in the search field, and you arrive straight at the um, and the first hit in the in the data as data set landing page in Pangea. And um, this is more or less also the case. You now it's in second place when we look in open air. So our uh, metadata findability is uh, is really excellent. Um, so if you look for a, a data set that includes this sort of data you will land there, um, yeah, very uh, surely. 